What is up guys, Bisectatron here with the next CWO Premier Recap video. This is week 8, interdivisional matchups, each clan going against another clan in its division. Uh, it's good to be back doing the CWO Premier videos. They're a series that you guys like, so I'm going to continue to do it, as well as do the projection videos as well before each week. But let's get right into the results because there were some awesome matchups in week 8. But let's start it right off here with the first four matchups, all of them coming down to one star. Art of War versus DS. DS gets the victory 84-83. Dark Looters X, another one star margin victory 85-84 over Dark Avengers. Three Point Park gets the win over Terps Win Big 80-79. And finally, LT... Interesting matchups. I'm going, to talk, I'm going to talk a lot about this one. Uh, Marshall's Nation got, does get the victory, though, 83-82 in another close war. Let's talk about that first matchup there with DS getting the victory over Art of War. Both clans now 3-5 and five after that one, um, both averaging about 82 stars per war. So not a lot, but also not that low. Um, solid amount, 82 stars per war. Doesn't win a lot, but doesn't lose that many, to be honest. Uh, but this one, a bit of an upset. I think Art of War was actually a little bit hotter going into it. But DS levels things out. Both clans 3 and 5. And both still looking okay. They have to make a move soon. But there's still uh, some hope for them to possibly go to the playoffs. In that next matchup though, Dark Looters X establishing themselves at the top of the Dragon Division. Going to 6 and 2 over the win against Dark Avengers. Dark Avengers... <laughs> They've had a very tough schedule. They've had tough wars. This one coming down to one star. A bit of a surprise because Dark Leaders X being so hot at the beginning of the season. Last two weeks, week six and seven, were down. Only got 78 stars, then 81, which actually was enough to win in week seven. But they still weren't scoring that high. And then finally here, they have a pretty solid performance. Do just enough to get the win over Dark Avengers. They're in good position. Dark Avengers still in the hunt there at four and four. And as far as the last two in the healer division, we have Three Point Park over Terps Win Big. Three Point Park getting a little bit of a uh, of a boost to their season, although they've had a few uh, easy uh, wars the last few weeks. But they are three and five now, despite starting off very slow. They're starting to bounce back a little, whereas Terps Win Big not doing too well, down at one and seven. And finally, the last one was a crazy matchup. LT against Marshall's Nation, both winning clans going into it, both leading the healer division. LT three-starred all of their Town Hall 11s. All four of the uh, Town Hall 11s on Marshall's Nation. I've only seen one Town Hall 11 three-star before, but they got all four of them, but still lost because they left so many Town Hall 10s on the board. I guess their strategy was to go and try to three-star all the 11s, because that might be easier in some cases, and let the Town Hall 10s deal with the Town Hall 10s. But despite four Town Hall 11 triples, which you guys will see some of them in a separate video, they uh, got the, they lost to Marshall's Nation. Marshall's Nation uh, won Town Hall 11 triple, I believe, but just more consistent on the Town Hall 10. So a crazy war. I'll talk more about it in another video. Next matchups here. Uh, one of them did not happen. CZX Knights had the bye because Pigeonism has dropped out. But in the other matchups, J off comfortable win 85-80 over Valor Doharis. Uh, WHF2, close one, but gets the victory over Emphatic Fury, 85-84. And Quixotic Squad, great uh, performance. Huge margins, 87-79 to over Dragon Rejects. So let's talk about the three matchups that did happen there, starting with the J-Off versus uh, Valor Doharis. Great victory to J-Off, and they've been hot the last few weeks. They had, I think, 80, 86 stars, 85 stars or actually 86, 84, now 85 this week. So they're scoring very high. Two 10v10 triples in this war. Uh, great stuff to them. Whereas Valor Harris falling behind, only averaging about 81 stars per week. Not going to get the victories, and it's certainly not doing it for them. 1-7, uh, and seven, not looking too good. Next matchup was WHF2 versus Emphatic Fury, that 85-84 victory. Emphatic Fury was on such an upward trend, though. They had a bye a few weeks back. They were starting to get the wins. They were up to, uh, I believe, 4-3. and three. They made a great run after a poor start at the beginning of the season, but they couldn't take the division leader, WHF2, coming off a tough loss to J-Off last week. Their first loss following a five-game winning streak, or a five-week winning streak, um, so that loss definitely hurt in week seven. 
uh, putting them down to five and two. But then they bounced back and got the win this week, pulled it off, 85 stars, definitely a great performance. Putting them at six and two atop the wall breaker division, Emphatic Fury at four and four, very tight division there, all clans uh, with a tying or winning record. And then finally, this last matchup with Quixotic Squad versus Dragon Rejects. Very interesting matchup. Quixotic Squad 4 and 3 going into it. Dragon Rejects also 4 and 3. Both clans fighting for what's a tough, tight division. Both looking to go to a, a winning record and compete with WHF2 atop the division. It was Quixotic Squad 87 stars. That's a huge amount of stars. I believe all 10s were tripled and 111 was tripled as well, as far as I know. And that'll get you those 87 stars, which is a the most we've seen so far. Uh, Dragon Rejects has been up and down. Quixotic Squad also been up and down, but they've had more upward potential. They've scored some very high some weeks, and they've had a few tough matchups as well. So I think the 5-3 and three record doesn't do them justice, especially because they have 83.9 stars for average, which is actually half a star more than WHF2, who sits uh, one game ahead of them in the division. So they're at 5-3, and three, whereas Dragon Rejects falls to 4-4 four and four, along with Emphatic Fury. That should be a very interesting division uh, because it's one of the only divisions, actually the only division, where no clan has a losing record. They're all in contention for a possible spot in the playoffs. Should be in very interesting uh, in the wall breaker division. So only two matchups to talk about here because the Wizard Division was totally on vacation. Uh, Quantum 3 and Crystal Warrior both no longer joining us in CWL Premier. So the other two clans had a bye. Uh, Grumpy Old Men and Pinoy Banditos both getting a free win. But in other news, Hindustan 85-84 over Rogue XI and King Jeffrey 83-82 over Finland War. So in that first close matchup between Hindustan and Rogue 11, um, interesting war for sure. Hindustan actually coming off a loss the week before to Pinoy Banditos. Pinoy Banditos, by the way, um, didn't compete this week to the bye, as you guys saw. But they've been having uh, an interesting season. Despite being 6-2 and two and first in the division now, they're averaging more stars against than they are stars for. But I guess they're just getting the stars at the right times to get the win uh, because they are at 6-2 and two despite that negative average star differential um, but they got the win over Hindustan last week so Hindustan uh, was down to five and two and they were able to bounce back they really um, I guess deserve that win if you can say that because they are averaging the most stars for in the uh, CWL Premier League at 85.1 which is a very solid war if you get 85 stars and that's what they're averaging so um, they get the victory Rogue 11 been more or less consistent but um, consistency doesn't win the big wars sometimes. They fall to 5-3 and three, along with King Jeffrey there. Um, a lot of contention in the balloon division as well. Uh, three clans all competing for first place. And then that other war in the balloon division, King Jeffrey versus Finland War. King Jeffrey had a really tough uh, schedule at the beginning of the season in the first two weeks. Then a really easy schedule after that. So they've been able to go up to 5-3 and three, um, against some relatively weaker clans in the last few weeks. Finland War uh, down to 1-7, and seven, not performing too well, and they're only averaging 81.5 stars for, so I guess it's uh, made sense and was predictable that King Jeffrey got the win this week over Finland War to go up and tie Rogue 11 for 5-3, and three, just one game behind the 6-2 uh, and two Hindustan in that division. Alright, last few matchups here, there's three of them with the one buy at the bottom here for Forge from Steel, but the three that happened, Invictus Prime uh, wins on percentage over Sons of Anarchy, tied 82-82, FYSB easy victory 85-79 over Fortess LTU, and One Hive Genesis and We Are Spartans also tie 81-81 for stars, but We Are Spartans wins on percentage. Definitely an interesting first matchup with Invictus Prime tying uh, Sons of Anarchy and just barely getting the win on percentage there because they were the only undefeated clan. Sons of Anarchy um, losing record, not doing too well. They were definitely the favorites, but it came down very close. We know uh, Invictus Prime was undefeated until last week where they lost um, to become 7 or 6 and 1, now going up to 7 and 1, but possibly a little bit of a slump in their uh, previously very hot season. FYSB, on the other hand, looking very uh, solid, very consistent. 
uh, with the win here over Fortes LTU with the six star margin this week, averaging 84.3 stars four. That's actually the same as Invictus Prime. Both clans now seven and one, but FYSB is a little bit more of an upward trajectory, whereas Invictus Prime has kind of slowed down a little bit the last few weeks. So FYSB looking very strong, um, very consistent, and looking to continue to, uh, to try to pull ahead here, um, running on the top of a five week winning streak uh, from the last five weeks. And finally, the war that I was in, One Hive Genesis versus We Are Spartans. Interesting war, um, kind of teeter-totter. There was a chance where We Are Spartans had, the, had the, uh, the opportunity to seize the victory. They had like three fails in a row. Back to us, um, we had like four dip fails, three or four dip fails, and uh, couldn't get quite as many 10v10s. We got one 10v10 along with them, I believe. Um, but neither clan could seize their opportunity to really pull the win away. It ended up coming down to the wire and ended with a dip fail. Had we got that last dip successfully, we would have won, but it ended up tying and they had the percentage. So good job to We Are Spartans 5 and 3, uh, Genesis down to 2 and 6. So that is it for this week. Hope you enjoyed the recap video. One more look at the standings as they stand right now, starting with the Gold Conference. Uh, the top clans, FYSB 7-1, and one, Invictus Prime 7-1, and one, both in that giant division, both fighting for the top spot. Also Forged from Steel, and then the last two divisions have clans that are 6-2, and two, a little bit tighter there in the last two divisions. Um, and finally, the Elixir Conference here, 6-2 and two, Dark Looters leads up top. Marshall's Nation at 7-1, and one, leading the Healer Division. Uh, J off at six and two leading the minor division and finally WHF2 leading a very close and highly contested division uh, at six and two in the wall breaker division. There is next week's matchups. The projections video should be out um, Thursday night to Friday morning ish depending on where you live. Um, I'll get that out as soon as possible so you can fill out the poll, have a few days to fill it out before everything closes up and we see how it goes. So glad to be back for this week and hope you enjoyed the return of the CWL premiere official content. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys either in my next video or in the projections video. See you guys then. Thanks. And Bisectatron out.